Okay, my name is Vietz. Um, Vietz is a uh, third generation. It's really very cool sim. I'm, I think most of you have already looked, take a look at it itself. Um, it was developed by Linux Torvalds back in 2005. Uh, this is important to notice because um, certain things are uh, particularly made for the Linux kernel development. So it was uh, created for the Linux kernel development and is now they use, nowadays used by a lot of uh, open source projects, uh, for example, PHPUD, for example, PHP Unit or um, Freedacid Pro, GNOME, as I already named it. And because it was developed by Linux Torvalds, it's um, it's based on three main principles, which are particularly designed for the Linux kernel development. Uh, but we will see that this is um, also suitable for PHP and me, and it makes a lot of sense. And the other three principles are um, security, distribution, and performance. And I will talk about uh, each one. <coughs> um, so what does this security mean? Um, if you're working in a, let's say, a, a Project that is uh, a little bit older, like 10 years or so, like for example, each of these like uh, <coughs> long term open source project, uh, you cannot make sure that maybe like one day your repository gets corrupted or for whatever reason, I don't know, memory corruption, disk corruption, whatever. In fact, most of the version control systems out there do not verify if, if what gets into this uh, system comes out exactly the same way. And this is um, uh, true for subversion, subversion does not check if you have this corruption, uh, you, or a subversion does not check if what you get out of the system is what uh, you put in uh, a few years ago. And this is one of the things that um, it, open source uh, software um, lot projects uh, have to cope with and uh, get us designed for social security things. So it really guarantees what gets into the system comes out exactly the same. Um, and I want to remember that because um, we will later see uh, on the way it comes to revision numbers, uh, we will see that this feature is, uh, is part of uh, how the revision numbers are, are made. <coughs> then the second thing is performance. Yeah, and the performance thing is not that important for PHP release because uh, the code base is not as large as, let's say, the Linux kernel, for example, but still um, the Git, uh, the Git code is particularly designed to be extremely fast. So if you do a checkout for, let's say, if you jump from the first PHP view review revision to the latest PHP view revision, I don't know how many revisions are there, a few thousands, uh, it will not be longer than, let's say, a second or so. Um, this is important because it's, uh, it enables you to use new features. I will talk about that later in the workshop. Um, for those of you who work on, like, uh, let's say, um, box, um, uh, regression box, etc., there are features in Git um, that are really new to the system because they are fast. They can um, uh, in, well implement features that are not possible as a burden to track down the regression <coughs> box. Sounds strange, but it works really. So. Um, it is it, the most the, the fastest version control system out there at the moment. Uh, get, and it also means that performance is not just uh, a thing of like how it's you fast you can check out a, a revision or whatever, but also uh, how compact the uh, repository is, or so that you don't have to transfer a lot of things over the wire. And the third thing is that this is what I really want to talk about today is distribution. Because this is, uh, when you come from the burden, uh, this is confusing at first time. And so what does distribution mean? It's simply the fact that we have Alice and Bob here. And Alice and Bob have a center of repository, like a burden server, like as far as I know, like the website team is a burden server, et cetera. So they have a central uh, repository where they push to and pull to or from, or get the checkouts, uh, get the revisions. What distribution means is that there is no such central repository anymore. So in fact, Bob is his repository, and uh, Alice can just clone. If I type in the clone, it gets the a whole copy of the repository. And that's really important to notice that Git and Git a clone is a complete copy from for the, uh, the complete repository. And the only thing that Git helps you with is synchronizing repositories within people. 
So there is no notion of a central repository anymore. Um, and, well, in fact, there is a notion of a central repository because there's the definition of which uh, repository is more important than another one, but Git itself um, does not do this. So it's, for Git, every repository is exactly the same. Um, if the wireless connection here um, is played out for whatever reason, you can just uh, give me a USB stick and get the PHP new repository for me instead of uh, from GitHub. It just doesn't matter. While if uh, you don't have a wireless connection here, you will have uh, pretty much a problem to commit to your subversion server. Um, so, the, as said, there's no construct of a sample repository anymore. Um, but there's a notion of uh, repository is more important than others. And uh, those are uh, just, um, in the case of the PCB, <coughs> uh, the GitHub repository, which acts more or less like a central repository with all the development uh, in, in the end goes into, but it, in fact, it is not more important than any other repository of any developer. The only thing that if people out there will try to find the repository where they find the, last, uh, the latest changes and the latest provisions of uh, PHP, they will go and uh, check out GitHub that's come for that. Um, and the model here is, uh, as said, no repository is more important than others, so uh, Alice can clone the repository uh, from GitHub, Bob can clone it from there, but Chart can clone it from Bob, there's no difference. Um, so uh, <coughs> this feature is um, one of the most important things um, because it gives you an implicit hierarchy of uh, people who are all imported from each other, cloned from each other, and this is what social coding is all about, and I will talk about this a little bit later. Um, so I will go through this. this one for me. So, um, why do I tell you about this uh, whole repository thing and why it's important for PHPDP? The first thing is decentralization or distribution means that, as I said, you have the repository locally on your disk. And this means you can commit whenever you want, whatever you want, uh, without anybody noticing. <coughs> so um, if you are on a plane, you can commit, which is not possible with the list of version. If uh, you're on, at a conference like here and you don't have a wireless connection like uh, as I was told uh, in London, for example, uh, you can still commit. It's, um, if uh, if uh, you want to commit a feature and you're not sure if this will be really good code and you're not 100% sure if this should go into the main repository, with a burden you have to think about what you're going to do, you probably have a lot of working directories on your disk, but in Git you just commit because nobody sees it, because you'll commit to your local repository and you're not able to like, walk alone and, and you will just later exchange those changes with other people. Um, another thing that comes with this whole the notion of distribution is that you have less access issues. So for example, within php.net, um, we have 300 SDN accounts. So it's pretty hard to figure out who is able to commit to which part, and if he is, uh, if he is still allowed to do it, etc. So that's why in php.net, there's no notion of uh, subversion access relocation. You cannot get rid of SDN access. If you, have, if you get it once, you will, be, you will have subversion access for the rest of your life, which is not a good idea usually. Is after 10 years, if someone starts to commit again, uh, probably that he, is, uh, he has different uh, opinions and different views and uh, writes different code. So um, this makes it easier for open source projects. Um, so for PHPDB, there are a lot of reasons to use Git. The first one is um, the notion of distribution, because it's, you can commit from home, you can uh, commit wherever you want, you can uh, exchange change it between everybody uh, without a uh, central server. Um, you don't need a special hardware anymore. If you have a problem, uh, for example, if the SVN server at PC.net uh, uh, breaks, 
you have a problem. You will not be able to um, yeah. to to well, better have access to that place. Civil space 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 and then there is one really really important thing, and that is GitHub, and that is well, I think one of the most important points for the community because GitHub enables you uh, to uh, easily fork a project, easily work on a project, and it is really the um, most important open source platform in the um, hosting platform in the next year or so. Uh, if you're not on um, GitHub at the moment, it's uh, really hard to, uh, to get new developers affected. So uh, GitHub is really one of the most important things for PhD media to here. Um, I'll okay. so, uh, this is just, uh, so this was just a, a short video about few of the reasons why you can use Git. There are a lot of other reasons, or particularly technical reasons for branching, etc. Uh, one of the things that I want to mention here is uh, for those of you who are really afraid of branches, uh, branching is Git is really easy because of the data structure that is used, we will come to that later. Um, so this is also an important point for, for uh, development of um, using Git, or using Git for development. But I will uh, go a bit into the technical details um, now um, and uh, see how all these features like distribution security and performance um, affect uh, the behavior of Git itself. And uh, for those of you who um, just want to get started with Git uh, have not used Git so far, I will always just talk about the command line Git because the command line Git on the command line is much more um, powerful than uh, any uh, GUI client out there, and I'm not a big fan of GUIs anyway. So, um, if you want to use a command line, a uh, GUI client, um, I don't know, I'm probably the wrong person to talk. I just talk. So, um, the first thing that we always do is get, uh, say, get who you are, because we don't have a central repository anymore, we don't have user access anymore, because there is no notion of who has access to a repository or not. Uh, we need to tell the the the, um, the system who we are. So this is quite straightforward. If you have not done that so far, just uh, do it. Um, then you clone the repository. This is the important step. We really well all the files are well, the initial clone of the complete repository is made. And um, for most of the people, the it, it looks straight that you clone a complete repository, but this because this must be here, because in Git, uh, the, uh, the storage format on this is designed to be very compact, so it's uh, not a lot of stuff, I don't know, it's like nine megabytes at the moment, so I don't know. So you download nine megabytes, and after that, you have all revisions for each of the um, You can jump to the first version, or to the latest version, uh, without a problem. And then just standard commands, like you know from the subversion, we have the git commit, etc. cetera. 